the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here's a question for you. Why are we here? Well, why are we here? The answer to that question, of course, would depend upon what do we mean by here, as well as what do we mean by we, as well as what do we mean by why? Here could refer to being at St. Michael's. Here could refer to geography of various proportions or scope. Here can refer to the whole world. It could refer to all of them. Likewise, we could refer to just us right now or it could refer to all of humanity. And why can have at least two references. One could be the cause. What caused us to be here? Why are we here? What caused us to be here? And the other could be why are we here? What is our purpose? You know, what's the purpose of being here? Why are we here? And we can give a variety of answers, and there are some usual answers. You know, when the kid says, why are we going to church? And the parent may say, because I said so, which we all know is ineffective, but we say it anyway. (laughs) You know, parenting, I have many axioms that I've developed over the years in various venues, and one is in the field of parenting. Parenting, one of them, is parenting is learning your limits. Why are we here? Or this is what we do. We go to church. We may be here at church out of a sense of duty, out of a sense of obligation. Or we may say, well, I'm here because I need to be here. Uh, There's something that I I get out of it. My week doesn't seem right. My Sunday doesn't seem right if I'm not here at church. Or I may be here because I like most of the people. (laughs) (laughs) I have a few friends here. I'm also realistic. All kinds of reasons, and they're not bad reasons for saying that we're here here at St. Michael's on this Sunday, but they're all in some way self-referential. There's something about me or we, you know, I'm here because of spiritual life, I'm here out of obligation, I'm here because a lot of other different kinds of things. But I would like us to consider uh, another answer to the question, why are we here? Not just in the scope of being here in this room at St. Michael's, but being here, period, on earth, alive. And that answer is, why are we here? Because of God. And that answer itself can be kind of flippant, a little too much, too easily given maybe. Because you may not know it, but God can refer to lots of different things. Lots of different ideas, lots of different personalities, values, so forth and so on. When actually, that's not the case. 
Because why we're here is not just because we say, well, God, okay, God, you know, that kind of thing, sort of a resignation, but because of our confession of God the Trinity. See, God is not just any God. And in fact, some Christian theologians, uh, some good ones, I don't mess by even bothering mentioning the bad ones. I don't even read them. I don't, people are coming, why do you know? There's no, there's no time for that. We need to focus on what's right and true, not waste our time. Some of them, may, I know, will put God in a small g because actually who God is was something that was contested, something that Christians confessed and learned to confess and learned to live because of their confession that Jesus was God. So it's not just any God idea that we're talking about. Why we are here is because of God, the Trinity. Why we are here. One answer to that is because God is the Father. We are here because of God, the Father. We are here because we are created to be here. The, the earth was created. There is a creator. It was something that came about out of nothing. And it wasn't because God the Father or God was bored. It was because God's love, God is love, was so abundant, so dynamic, that in a way we could say it could not be contained. There's an overflow. God created us. We are here because we are creatures of God. And we can expand that a little bit and even say we are here because we are children of God. We're here because God created all of life that surrounds us, each of us, and ourselves. Why are we here? We are here because of God the Son. God sent the Son. The Father sent the Son. And we have in today's Gospel the text, God so loved the world that he gave the gift of his only begotten Son so that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent the Son. We can say in many ways to redeem us, to save us. But I'd like us to also think that God sent the Son and now not only do we exist, we're here, but we also have a history. We have some person, some events that have happened in human history. God has entered, not only created this life, God has entered this life in the incarnation. The Word was made flesh. God has entered into our life entered into our history and in the resurrection of Jesus history the end of history has been changed forever there's a principle philosophical and theological principle and well I suppose it could apply to literature that you only know what the story means when you know its ending oh that's what it's about. I guess in the most dramatic form would be in certain mysteries. Oh, that's what was going on. That's what it was all about. That's what it means. Well, that 
in God's story is the resurrection. That's the end of history. That's what it all is going to mean. So not only are we here because we were created and given the gift of life, if you will, we've been given the gift of God's history, the gift of God's very own life in Jesus shared with ours so that our life can be shared with him. We are here because God sent the Son. Now you may think, that's a lot. We're here because God the Father created us to be here. We're here, gathered here, because there is this history, this person of Jesus, this resurrection, ascension, incarnation, all of that with Jesus. We're here because of that. But the answer to why we are here has more to it. It has an intimacy and a scope, a comprehensiveness, a depth, that it says in Ephesians that we really cannot ask or imagine. In other words, being here as created, being here, if you will, as saved even, for God is not enough. Why are we here? We are here because God is the Holy Spirit. Because God sent the Holy Spirit. And the New Testament tells us that the Holy Spirit is sent, if you will, after Jesus ascends into heaven. You have the Pentecost, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit once you have, in a sense, in a sense, not completely, the historical absence of Jesus, the ascension into heaven. And that is because the Holy Spirit comes, as we heard in Romans last week, searches the depths of our life. And all creation groans, waiting for its adoption. That in our weakness, in prayer, where we do not have the words, the Holy Spirit is like, the depth of ourselves, which is gathering and bringing and forming us to enter into that life for which we are created always, eventually, to have in the Son, in Christ. And this is why in baptism we speak, not only are we marked as Christ's own forever, do we become the body of Christ, but in baptism we are also given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're not meant just to say, oh, yes, there's that history. Oh, that was a good thing you did. I'm thankful for it in Jesus. Oh, yeah, you know, great. I'm glad we're created. It's a wonderful creation. That's not enough. Not until all of us and all of this creation, really, finds its home within 
the life of God. The Holy Spirit is that power of reconciliation, the power of unifying, the power that will not let death be separated from life, or not let the past be separated from the future, not let one person be separated from another person, will not let us be separated from God, and if it will, you can say as well that the Holy Spirit is that power that will not let the Father and the Son be separated. That's why sometimes the Holy Spirit is referred to as the, as a book once called it, the go between God. So we are here because there's a power, an intimacy, a depth, a comprehensiveness that would continue to draw us into this life we are created to have. The Son came to give us, and if you will, God will not rest until it happens. So we're here, in a way, because God is a restless God. You can think of that wonderful quotation from St. Augustine, in his confessions, where he said, my heart will not rest until it rests in you. Well, that's the created, the redeemed, the sanctified self. But we may even also say, God will not rest until we rest in him. We're here because God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is Trinity Sunday. And it's not, as some preachers would say, oh, it's the only Sunday of the year in which we talk about a doctrine. Well, that's true and that's not true. Every Sunday is a Trinity Sunday. We are baptized into that Sunday. That's why we're here. So in a sense, our prayer is also with Paul about that death. It says in Romans, So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For we did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. We have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God and of children, then heirs. That's destiny language. That's why we're here. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, the life that we were meant to have, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. Abba, Father, the prayer of Jesus is our prayer. It is the prayer that the Spirit prays in us. We are here to pray, to become Abba, Father. Amen.